Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So from time to time I've seen videos on YouTube which explain how you can build your own Arduino microcontroller board by buying the 80 mega chip and kind of building it yourself. And I thought, now wouldn't it be interesting if you could do that with a, an ARM Cortex microcontroller? I noticed that Adafruit sold a kit about five years ago that allowed you to do this very thing. However, though some of those pieces are now no longer available. So I took that project as a basis and I kind of updated it uh, so that you could use pieces you could still buy today to allow you to build a Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller board. And this is it, this is what you get on a breadboard when you actually build it. And what I wanna do today is show you how you can build this step by step, starting with the chip that you buy, the actual uh, NXP microcontroller chip, and then building together this circuit and then programming it with your own software so that we can flash an LED. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Before we get started, I want to say one thing. This is quite a long video because I do take it from the very, very basics, you know, the bits that you need, right up to the very end where we've actually got our own firmware running on this board. I did think about splitting it into two videos, but I thought since this is just one project, we'll just go from the beginning to the end. So if you really are interested in this, do stick to the very end because I cover absolutely everything you need to know. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, so these are all the pieces that we're gonna to need to make our own microcontroller board. And of course, the star of the show is the microcontroller itself. This is a, a Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller, 16K of flash, 4K of RAM, comes from NXP, and this is actually the LPC812. It comes in different packages. And as you can see, this is one with these 20 little pins on it. So we're gonna use this adapter here. This is a SOP 20 adapter so that we can uh, solder this onto these pads here and then with these legs here we're going to be able to push this into the breadboard so we need the adapter the pins and then a breadboard now for the power supply we need two capacitors these are both 0.1 microfarad capacitors and then a 3.3 volt uh, voltage regulator uh, and this is a microchip mcp 1700 and again i'll leave uh, information about all of these things and links where i can in the description below. We're gonna need an LED and a 220 ohm resistor so we can flash an LED to show that our microcontroller is working. And then we need a, a USB to serial adapter. I showed you one of these in my blue pill, black pill video, exactly the same kind of thing. And we're gonna need some wires here to actually wire up the uh, breadboard once we start plugging in all the components. So that's it. Basically the microcontroller and its adapter so we can put it into the breadboard, something for the power supply, something that we can flash on and off, and something to program it, and the wires to connect it all together. Okay, so what I've done is I've broken off 10 pins uh, twice so that I've got these two rows of legs here and I've put them into the uh, breadboard because that makes it much easier to solder on this uh, this uh, uh, PCB now because it kind of keeps it still for you. Now, as I've said, I'm not the world's uh, best solderer. In fact, when I first did this uh, from the prototype I built, I kind of had to do it two or three times to get it right. I'm more of a software guy really, but we will see what we can do. Now the first thing you do is after you've put the PCB on there is I'm gonna put uh, some flux on here so that the uh, solder sticks well to the metal bits and doesn't stick to the other bits. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do there. And all we've gotta do now is solder these 20 joints so that the PCB is uh, soldered to the um, to the pins. Okay, so I've soldered these first 10 connections here down this side. Now we're gonna spin it round and we're gonna solder the other 10 connections, maybe put some more flux on it if it's dried out by now. So I'll press on and do that. And then afterwards we'll test to make sure that each of these connections are actually good connections. Okay, now that I've got that all soldered up, I wanna test each of the connections. And we need to do this now because later on when we're building on the circuit, if something isn't working, we wanna make sure it's not because we've made a mistake here early on. So what I'm gonna do is in each one of these uh, holes, I'm gonna stick this little cable Okay, and then what we're gonna do is stick, I've got a multimeter here, which the type that you know buzzes when you when you make a connection. And you can do that now because we've got no components on the board, so that's safe. And what I'm gonna do is basically this pad here on the PCB should be connecting out to the end of this pin here, which it is, great. And so now we move along one, and let's check the next pad. That's good, and you can also test to make sure the ones on either side aren't buzzing as well. Be great, and I'm now gonna do that, I'm gonna test all of them to make sure that all of the, the, the solders have come through correctly. Okay, so they all tested out okay. So the next thing is we actually want to put the chip here on these pads like this. 
Now this is the most fiddliest part of the whole thing. Notice there's a notch here in the top of the design and there's a notch here in the top of the chip so you know which way around it's meant to go. Now we're gonna, the way to do this is you tin each of the pads which I'll show you starting to show you how to do that in a minute and then finally you put the chip on and you heat up the leg and then it just kind of melts into the tin that you've already uh, put on there. So let's tin each of these pads and then we'll get around to putting on the actual chip. So first of all, you wanna put lots and lots of uh, flux on because really we only want this to stick on the pads. So you, in fact, almost an exaggerated amount uh, of on here because really all we want is the tin to stay on those pads and we don't want it to go anywhere else. And then what you do is you take your soldering iron and you put a very small amount on each pad. And this is the tricky bit to actually get this right, but we'll have a go. So I'm not very good at this, but we'll just see what we can do. Heat up the pad, a tiny bit of solder. Okay, so I've lightly tinned all of those now, and now comes the really tricky part. The idea is to put the chip here on the pads, and then you heat up very gently and press down on one of the pins, and then it meet, heats up the tin that you've already put on there, and then actually starts to, uh, to solder it on there. Now this takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. Okay, and then afterwards we'll check all the connections again, but take your time, gently, small amounts of pressure, okay, until you get them all stuck on there really well. I'll go ahead and do that now. It's easier to do it off camera than to try to do it here under the camera, and then I'll come back in a moment. So as I've said, Many times from now, I'm not that very good at soldering, but it also gives a hope to other people like me. If you're not very good, you can still do it with patience. Now, what we're gonna do now is we need to test each pin on the chip and make sure it comes down this cable like we did earlier on, and that makes sure there's a good connection. So we're gonna start with this end pin here, and we wanna touch the pin on the chip itself, and then we wanna actually see if there's a connection. I'm not running a current through it this time. I'm actually gonna use just to see how many ohms are measured. You don't wanna run any current through this chip now. And that first pin was a success. So I'm now gonna go ahead and test all the others and make sure that all of them are connected correctly. Okay, now that's all checked out okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build the kind of the power supply part of this circuit now the power will come through the usb to serial converter and we'll take the five volts and the ground off that and we're going to use these uh, little components here now we'll start with the voltage regulator okay with the flat side towards you there's a rounded side and there's a flat side with the flat side towards you just pop that here into three consecutive holes there you go like that so that's all three holes there on that there. And then what we do is we take one of these capacitors and we just stick that across the two rails there like that. And we take the other one and we stick that across the first and the second pin of the voltage regulator. Okay, so that's all the components in place. So now we're gonna to need to actually just put a few wires in. We're gonna go from the third pin here on the voltage regulator through to our positive power rail here on the breadboard. So there we go, simple as that. Third pin through to the positive. And we're also gonna go from the first pin, which has also got the capacitor and the voltage regulator on it. We're gonna go from there through to our negative rail. So let's just connect that up. like that. So that's the first pin with the capacitor and the voltage regulator through to negative, the third pin through to the positive. Okay, so that's the little uh, power supply. Now we're going to be taking the power from the converter, uh, the, the serial to USB converter, as I said. So all you do is you take the USB serial converter and you just pop it in here into some spare spaces. Now the right hand pin here on this board, on this particular model, is the ground pin. Be careful, some of the boards are wired up differently. You need to check the labels, but this is the ground pin on this one. So we're now gonna go from the ground pin here through to the ground here on our actual uh, board. So that those are connected up. Okay, and we can even push that capacitor down there like that. So there we go. So that's from pin number five through to the ground. Now the five volts is the fourth pin along. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from that fourth pin along and we're gonna connect it to this middle pin here or on the voltage regulator and the other side of this capacitor. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's the fourth pin 
through to the middle pin. I've bent this capacitor out of the way. Let's pick that back up there. Let's straighten that up there. Okay, so that goes into the middle pin of the voltage regulator and the right hand side of the capacitor. And that's coming from the fourth pin, which is the five volt. So that basically now will give us power to this little part of the circuit. All we need to do now is to power up the board and to connect the TX and RX to the uh, chip itself. Okay, so the RX on the uh, serial to USB converter is the second pin on this model, and it needs to go around to pin five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there it is. And now we want to do the TX. So the TX is the next pin next to it. So the third pin there, just under this jumper, which makes it a little more difficult to get to. Let's just pop that in there. Okay, and that needs to go around to the 19th pin on here. Now, of course, these are all labeled, which is really, really uh, handy. Connect that in there. Okay, so now we've got the five volts on the ground going into our little uh, circuit here, and we've got the TX and the RX going through to the uh, microcontroller itself. And finally, the microcontroller needs some power, so we need to connect two of these pins over to these two rails here. So let's just do that. We need to connect... Uh, the positive, the fire volts to pin 15. So let's just count them off here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we connect that to the positive rail of our breadboard. And we need to connect the ground to pin 16, the one next to it. So I've got an LED here. What we're going to just do is just stick that into two pins here. Notice that the longer leg is on the right hand side as I'm as I'm putting this in. I'm also going to connect now a resistor from the left hand leg, which is the shorter one. And we're going to put that straight through to ground. And finally, we need a way to control that. So we're going to take a from pin number one. That's the one we're going to use. And we take that round to the positive pin on the LED. So pin number one. Just take it through to the positive here on the LED. Okay, so now that will be uh, connecting through to the LED and then through the LED into the resistor and then onto the ground. Okay, that's it, that's our circuit complete. So the next step, of course, is the software. Okay, so we're basically gonna need two bits of software to be able to write programs and flash them onto our microcontroller. One of them is Flash Magic. Of course, links will be in the description below. It's basically a programming tool for microcontrollers from NXP. And since we're using the NXP LPC812, this is a perfect tool for doing that. So you need to download it and then you need to install it. Installation is pretty simple. Next, 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 next. Uh, and it will also install some drivers along the way. Now, the other piece of software we need is MCU Expresso, which is an integrated development environment from NXP itself. It's free of charge, code size unlimited, easy to use, and it supports the LPC MCUs, which of course is what we're using. The only downside is that you do need to create an account at the NXP website, log into that to get through to the download area. So you need to do that, you need to download it, and then you need to uh, install it. Uh, again, fairly easy installation, next, next, next. It's quite a big download, quite a big place. You need to install it somewhere where you've got enough disk space, but a pretty uh, easy thing to actually download and install. So you need to download both of those tools, the Flash tool and the uh, integrated development environment so that we can write some code. Okay, now to get the basic project outline for uh, this uh, microcontroller. And there is a, a project on GitHub, which is called LPC 810 Codebase. And that really has got the skeleton of any uh, project that you want to run. Links will be in the description. We need to download that. So we click over here on clone or download and we'll just download the zip file of that basic skeleton uh, project that we need. Okay, next of all, we need to start the MCU Expresso IDE. And when you first start it up, it asks you where you want to keep the workspace. I'm going to just shorten this a lot. And if you remember, I installed the other program in F, uh, 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 NXP, I think it was. So I'm gonna put this in uh, F NXP workspace. So that's a simple, use this as a default and do not ask for this again. Okay, so here we are inside of the uh, MCU Expresso IDE. Now what we want to do is import that project that we downloaded. So in fact, the easiest way to do that is just to click 
IDE over here, which makes you switch to the normal IDE. And then down here on the left-hand side, import projects from file system. And then it actually says, do you want a .zip file? That's why we download the .zip file. So we'll go to yes, and I'll go and find that .zip file. There it is there, and open that up. Okay, and then we just go through it. And it says, what are the projects? Well, that's the projects inside of it. And it just goes through that and creates the project here on the left-hand side. And as you can see, it's all the things that you'd find in a C or a C++ environment. And what we want is source. And there's lots of files here that have already made for us that do lots of useful things. Main.c, that's where things happen inside of uh, C programs. And so what we wanna do is scroll down here and the first thing we want to do is change the lead location. Now, if you remember, we've connected it to pin one, if you remember from the hardware uh, setup. And if we have a quick look here at uh, the pinout of the, uh, the chip that we have, pin one over here is called PIO zero, so that's on port zero, pin 17. So we wanna change, uh, not pin two, we're not using two, which is down here, we're using 17, because we connected it up there. So in the code here, we need to change this to a 17. And then we need to scroll down here a bit further into the main program. Now, one thing to notice is I connected the, uh, the uh, LED to ground. So in fact, when it says uh, off here, it's actually gonna be on for us. It's gonna be the other way around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to be on for, let's say one second. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna make it go off very quickly. Let's reduce this to, let's make it 250. So it stays on and blinks very quickly. And that will give us a, make sure that it's our program that's running and not anything else that we might uh, have already uploaded onto there or some other program. We'll be sure that it's our one because it's this long and short combination. Now, once you've done that, we can just save that. So it's probably control S, yes it was. Go up to project and then say build project. And it's going ahead and it's building that and now it's built. Now, what actually happens in here, they've already given us a releases directory, and these are the projects that we've just built, and we're interested in this .hex file. And what we need to do is we need to find that in Windows Explorer. So a really easy way to find that is to right-hand click on the source directory here, go to properties, and then click this little button here, which basically shows it in Windows Explorer. And so there it is now in Windows Explorer, and we want this hex file. So the next step is to fire up that flash magic tool so we can download the hex file onto our board. Okay, so here is flash magic. We'll make this uh, full screen. Uh, and what the first thing we do is to change the microcontroller. If you remember, we're using an LPC812 and then that's gonna find that, and it's actually that one, the uh, JD20. The other variations here are basically to do with the, the packages they come in. So that's the one we want, and then we want uh, the board rate to be uh, 115200. Now we also want to pick COM7, which is actually what the, um, what the F TDI programmer is. Now the important thing is to make sure that we put this into programming mode. So I'm gonna cut now to show you how you put the board into programming mode, and then we'll come back here. Okay, so to put the board, the microcontroller into programming mode, we need to connect pin three here to ground. And so the easy way to do that is using one of these other types of wires because we can very easily pull it in and out. So basically, pin three, we've already got something in pin one, of course, that's what we're gonna flash the LED with. Pin five, that's the, um, the RX or the TX, I can't remember which one it was. Now, you need to connect this to ground, okay? And then we need to connect up the power to it and it will go into programming mode. So let's connect up the power. Okay, the red LED has come on there. Let's see if we can just turn that around a little bit. Okay, and now we can program it from our computer. Okay, now that we have the board in programming mode, one thing we can do is go up to here and say read signature. That will make sure that it can talk correctly, and it can, it can talk correctly now to this chip. So that's all working okay. So now we wanna go up and then we want to say, oh sorry, in here we want to go to browse and we want to find that program that we've built. So that was in uh, NXP, workspace, code base, release, and there's that hex file that I was talking about. So we pick that and then all we do is that we actually we can tick verify just to make sure it loads okay. And we just hit this go button, start button here, and that will program it and it does it pretty quickly. And that's it, it's loaded onto the firmware. Now we'll go back over to the board, we'll reboot it and we should see our LED flashing.
Okay, so now that's programmed, we need to uh, disconnect the USB again, take away our little uh, enable pin here, and now we connect it up again, our program should be up and running. So let's see, there we go. Long, short, long, short, so that's our program running. And that's it, we've done it. We've built it and we've programmed it and here it is running. Well done. Okay, so there you have it. And I won't keep it around any longer. It's been quite a long video. You know the drill. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.